Hello, this is your Trudy Clarice Talaga and today is the 3rd of May, the first Monday for the month of May 2021. So, from this point on, it's, it's really fast track forward. So, uh, in the the essence, you know, the goal of day by day update and um, that there's a central theme where um, facts will be for general patronage because it involves the labor, it involves um, prospecting um, the highly specialized and skill workers and professionals that may be interested in the opening and uh, due to the regular and close coordination with the field offices of national offices national departments from the mostly executive branch of the government yours truly clarissa talaga will be answering the persistent the persisting questions that had not been answered in the previous broadcast. So please stay tuned because from here on, it's going to be um, a linear, a linear direction towards the more concrete information that you can take to DOLE, to the Department of Labor and Employment, to the DFA, Department of Foreign Affairs. So instead of name, it's not actually, uh, name dropping at this point can help because it will speak of the um, officer in charge with whom I have already coordinated. So kung magbibigay lang po ako ng information na Walang specific, like the contact person, like sino yung hahanapin, kailan, bali wala po lahat ng uh, information dissemination, bali wala po ang platform na ito, di ba? So, hindi po maiiwasan na hindi magsabi kung nasaan ang, nasa ang lamesa ang dinidiscuss ko ngayon, di ba? So, sino ang hahanapin? Hahanapin siya sapagkat siya po yung nakausap. Meron pong transcript of record kung saan nagpalitan ng information na magka-guide sa mga tao in case na interesado sila, in case na stakeholders din pala sila because uh, uh, they are operating within the same industry, Allied services or allied industries directly and indirectly connected po pala sa mga tinutukoy ko na line of business. So, mas mahalaga po na yung sense of responsibility, sense of, ah, di po ba, I am culpable if I mention a name, a contact person na babanggitin kasi mas malinaw, di po ba, kesa you know, I say something parang kuda lang na kuda tapos wala namang binibigay na facts kung saan ang ordinary tao na makakarinig sa akin ay pwede talagang panghawakan at pwede talagang makatulong sa paggagawa niya ng plano para sa sarili niya, para sa profession niya, sa pagtatrabaho niya, sa negosyo niya, di po ba? So, ang main reason lang naman po, that's why I give specific items, specific facts, yun, para may panghawakan ang Bawat isa sa atin, ako bilang nagsasalita, kayo bilang nakakarinig sa akin, na uh, pareho natin pwedeng panghawakan ang uh, sentimiento ko, sentimiento mo, di ba? Upang marinig tayo at upang magkaroon ng makatotohanan na pag-resolve sa mga problema. And at the same time, kung papano um, mas mapapabilis habang may pandemya, so, in spite of the pandemic, the things that we're still allowed to 
do while observing the basic health measures, diba? So, we can still do that. So, this is yours truly, Clarissa Talaga. So, stay tuned. Some years back, nagkaroon po ako ng pagkakataon na magkaroon ng project. I was hired project-based job order sa City Planning Development Office ng the City of Lucena. Lucena City Plan... Uh, no, CPDO, City Planning and Development Office of Lucena City. Uh, I was hired to make um, research on the investment profile of Lucena City. I was able to get in touch with the uh, uh, interviewees at uh, sila po ang maitatawag, matatawag natin, the pillars of the business community here in Quezon. So, uh, I was reporting to Mrs. Ophelia Garcia, no relation, uh, and she was the chief of CPDO. So, for a time, uh, I shared office with my sister-in-law, Monina Laot Talaga. So, I, I was there and... Pag wala pa ako sa office, I was uh, doing field work. So this was the, at the time that um, my uncle, the younger brother of my late father, Mayor Ramon Y. Talaga Jr., was still the mayor of Lucena City. So uh, marami po akong uh, pagkakataon na ma-interview ma sa iba't ibang larangan ng negosyo ang mga uh, for mga kumaga sila po ang mga pioneers in their fields di ba so i'm going to go back to those interviews later on so um nangyari po after that so may background ako so while pursuing my own name in the music industry in pulp fiction, diba? my technical writing was first home. I made a lot of mistakes in the past because shifting from a literary fiction writing, I also tried script writing. Uh, bigla pong nagkaroon ng chance na makapagsulat ako through research, mga technical writings. Although I was also do, I had done um, translating work. I also did some kubagam documentary. I also cannot deny the number of times I had tried to practice my profession in a bigger city, in Metro Manila. So I would rent a place there and uh, try to make the cut. <laughs> Unfortunately, diba, no matter how hard I tried and no matter how many times I had attempted, um, I prayed and I prayed about it. So there was a time, oh my gosh, I was so frustrated because always the result was not... Uh, how I had hoped them to be. So, um, after many times of uh, trying to connect and trying to work it out um, by writing my resume, my curriculum vitae, uh, company profile, and still nothing happened. You know, one day I just, after um, making some research about companies, foreign companies that have no real um, base in Metro Manila. Sabi ko, why not them bring them here so that a, someone like me will not have to, you know, squeeze myself in whatever space I can grab from another person, diba? that I can snatch from another professional, from another wannabe from the province. Diba? That's usually the quintessential story of how a provincial or a provin provinciana 
will try his luck sa Metro Manila, di ba? And so, it didn't happen. It didn't pan out. So, I always, always get back here to Quezon with more uh, utang or debts left behind because that's usually the story um, mag-iipon dito sa probinsya and then when nothing seems to be happening, luluwa sa Maynila to try our luck, to try our chances there. So why not um, create the same potential, the same possibilities in the province, di ba? First and foremost, habang nakikipagkwentuhan nga ako sa mga professional, although uh, one good thing about that had happened when I had tried my luck in Metro Manila is lumawak in circle. Although they may forget me if I really am that forget, forgettable, still, my conversation with them had remained with me and I learned a lot. Also, I got to share the benefit of living in the province. Ito po nangyari before the pandemic. Uh, years before the pandemic. And now that COVID-19 had hit hard, NCR Plus, um, I rest my case. <laughs> because this concretizes the abstract and the direction I was taking. The reason that my papers got to be uh, reached, had reached places, and that my name, along with it, to the point that the endorsement that I got, I cannot avoid mentioning the name of who endorses me, diba? It's so hard to be endorsed by someone whose name will not be put or, or will not be written on that piece of paper. That's why, you know, this is the background of uh, yours truly and why I said that I will be most effective in being one of the administrator of this project because I have experienced it real life, diba? There is a need to be fulfilled and I have felt that need. I have that, you know, the unmet needs that uh, the likes of us, the likes of me, diba? For, through the years, hindi po siya nasagot. And now that there's a pandemic, there's a paradigm shift. So more than ever, I, I would tell that those uh, professionals, new friends that I met in Metro Manila, why won't you envy the kind of lifestyle that we have in the province? Um, wherein after office hours, we... Um, we will not have to like to battle it out to reach home. So, may ibigay pa namin ang quality of quality time sa aming family. And at the same time, you know, our hair, our skin, our passion, we have day job. And more than anyone, having um, day job, having, having, um, racket here and racket there, especially for artists, the gig economy, it's all possible because of the distance. We don't have to navigate EDSA, take for instance. We don't have to um, battle it out for a place in LRT or in MRT. Diba? We can arrive medyo nakaano pa, medyo fresh pa <laughs> sa appointment. <laughs> diba? So, why will you not, why should you not envy us? Like, after office hours, we can still, I can still um, do the choir, rehearsal, and prepare for a production. Kasi pwede pa. The time will allow us to indulge, to um, polish whatever craft, to uh, dedicate time to improve a product. This is the place for research and development. So, yun po yung mga nasi-share ko dun sa mga bagong kakilala, kakilala ko. But the, the question still remains, what was I doing in Metro Manila if I have already, uh, if I'm already making those speeches? 
para ang sales pitch, di ba? The opportunity is not here. If the opportunity is not here, I was thinking that if I get a foot inside, probably I can, I can do something about it. Nada. All my efforts didn't uh, yield the desired result. So that was the uh, background why I had written these conglomerates via Grab Philippines. Uh, so just because I say that I am better situated ideally situated to become part of this project actually um, without providing the the necessary um, just to be without providing the necessary justification it would be impossible for the investors to trust me that's why I it was a series of correspondence and communication as um, front and center would be how I was managing my own disadvantages, my own technical hurdles diba? uh, as a business entity here in the Philippines. Can I just uh, take you to the website? Uh, where it's actually providing me with uh, the best concept and the best explanation there is. It's the private enterprise. We are not here to be so the private enterprise for development in low-income countries coordinate, coordinated by Center for Economic Policy Researcher, CEPR, in partnership with UK Aid, UK United Kingdom Aid. So um, it's a PEDL stands for Private Enterprise for Development in Low-Income Countries. I, I typed the special economic zones in the search engine google saan pa ba? so lessons from the global experience actually they provided um, the general overview the general na over pa, ba? the overview of what it is we have um our counterpart which is kumaga adapted for our own you know to suit the unique factors that we have here in the philippines but this is you know i would be coming from the overview internationally globally before i would before i can zero in on the specific laws here in the philippines So the private enterprise development in low-income countries, special economic zones, lessons from the global experience. Number one, the concept and definitions of SEZs, special economic zones or industrial parks. Special economic zones or SECs or industrial parks are proliferating around the globe. The zones can be effective instruments to promote industrialization if implemented properly in the right context. Some emerging economies, especially those in East Asia, offer examples of success. However, such zones are expensive risky endeavors that require careful planning. They can be a tool for, polit for political speculation rather than a tool for economic development. And some zones, the so-called white elephants, fail entirely. Epic fail. <laughs> That's more like it. 
This paper examines the zone phenomenon by looking at what is known about the conditions that tend to lead to success and failure of these endeavors. The term special economic zones, which others know as SEZs, covers a broad range of zones such as free trade zones, export processing zones, industrial parks, economic and technology development zones, high-tech zones, science and technology parks, free ports, enterprise zones, and others. Table 1 shows the most common types that have been created in the recent years. Hopefully, I can show this table, an overview of common types of special economic zones. Um, number one, it, when you hear or when you encounter the name free trade zones, the definition would be FTZs, also known as commercial free zones, are fenced in, may bakod po siya, duty-free areas, that has to do with different taxes, Offering warehousing, storage, and distribution facilities for trade, transshipment, and re-export operations. Next, if you encounter export processing zones, EPZs are industrial estates aimed primarily at foreign markets for exports. We have that in Cavite, the province of Cavite. Marami po industrial parks in Cavite, um, Batangas, and Laguna. But here in Quezon, uh, although there had been plants in the past, it is yet to be a, rea a realized dream. So, uh, EPZs offer firms free trade conditions and a liberal regulatory environment. There are, in general, two types of EPZs. One is a comprehensive type, open to all industries. Another is a specialized type, only open for certain specialized sectors or products. Next is comprehensive special economic zones. Comprehensive SEZs, also called multifunctional economic zones, are zones of a large size that have with it a mix of different industrial, service, and urban amenity operations. So, hindi lang siya, ano, hindi lang siya coming from one industry. In some cases, these zones can encompass a whole city or jurisdiction, such as Shenzhen City and Hainan Province in China. Okay, next is the very popular here, the industrial parks. Um, all, it can be a proper noun or a common noun, but industrial parks also hold also called industrial zones are largely manufacturing based sites. Some multifunctional ones similar to comprehensive special economic zones listed as I, uh, as I mentioned before before industrial parks uh, but usually operate at a smaller scale. The parks normally offer a broad set of incentives and benefits. The bonded area comes next. Bonded areas, also known as bonded warehouses, are specific buildings or other secured areas in which goods may be stored, be manipulated, or may undergo manufacturing operations without payment of duties that would ordinarily be imposed. To some extent, a bonded area is similar to a free trade zone or free However, the major difference is that a bonded area is subject to customs law and regulations while a free trade zone is exempt from these provisions. Then we have the specialized zones. Specialized zones include science technology parks, petrochemical zones, logistic 
logistics parks, and airport-based zones. Then, uh, the final list in the table is the eco-industrial zones or parks. Let me say something about this later. Eco-industrial zones or parks focus on ecological improvements in terms of reducing waste and improving the environmental performance of firms. They often use an industrial symbiosis concept and green technologies to achieve energy and resource efficiency. Given the severe environmental challenges, an increasing number of countries is embracing this new type of zone. You know, one attraction for me why I would watch uh, a series in the Netflix um, set in Scandinavian country, for example, some parts in Europe, uh, because they will feature the way of life, the amenities they have of modern Europe, Scandinavian countries, where they where nature, preservation of nature exists with industrial zones, diba? How do they coexist with each other? The vigilance about um, the preservation of nature, the ecology, diba? the ecosystem, both uh, in electronic and in real nature, diba? Um, they watch each other talaga. So, any mishap or accident will be heavily fine. Of course, they have a different way of doing things there. Uh, copying from A to Z will not work in a place like uh, the Philippines because uh, there are a lot, a lot of differences, diba? It's, it's apples and peaches, apples and oranges, but some principles can apply. So I am truly, truly amazed at, um, you know, the design of the house, the architectural, um, the zoning permits and how, you know, the houses, the infrastructures were built there. So it, um, my interests were really peaked. Of course, under the new stories and it's pandemic, so I got to watch um, several series and movies from Netflix, uh, which truly is an eye opener. And this would not have happened without the pandemic. So, meron meron din naman na. Um, merong um, nagawa ang pandemic in terms of um, our education, diba? in terms of our consciousness. This is yours truly, Clarissa Talaga. Thank you.